Now, finally, I'm just going to quickly touch on the Cricket Australia calendar um, before we sign off on episode 100 of the On The Ball podcast. It's a tough topic because we aren't privy to the numbers that Cricket Australia are, and it's easy to be a, you know, a couch... What, what are they called? A couch expert? Uh, armchair expert, I think is what they call it. Um, but I think changes have to be made to Australian cricket. I think the fact that the test matches run at the same time as the Big Bash just makes zero sense to me. Um, the fact that Ben McDermott goes and scores 96 in the Big Bash and then people are convinced he could be a number five for the Australian cricket team in test matches is a concern and I think it's pretty stupid really. Um, so I think changes have to be made there. I think the Sheffield Shield has to be running while the test matches are running. So Australia has a pool of players to pick from, can see who's in form as such. And it'll actually be just more interesting to watch. It'd give more um, relevance to the Shield matches. People would be tracking the scores, seeing who's going well, seeing who could potentially move into a spot into the test team. So what I'm proposing is either a big bash shift forward to October or Big Bash go January, and because they often want to line up the school holidays, I'm going to say Big Bash starts in January. I think the tests, well, they do. I'm not going to adjust the test schedule because it's kind of set in stone, but basically from mid-November to the start of January or the first week of January is the test matches. So I'm going to be running the Shield from the start of, or maybe even late October, right through to probably Christmas is when I'd stop them because they don't really need to be playing through the final test. So I think the end of October to Christmas is when the Shield should be played. And yes, I know it's not going to be a big money maker in December for Australian cricket, but this is just looking at it from a purely logical standpoint in terms of on-field success. So I think the Shield should be played from the end of October to December. Then you play the Big Bash in January, and you really shorten it down. 14 games is ridiculous. Um, I've actually been really into the Big Bash this year and even the last couple games I've fallen away from it because at this point you're just watching so many games. They just all blend into one really. Um, So I think it should be shortened. Each team plays each, each team once and then you have your final series. Get that done in a month, bang. That's done. And then you can play your T20 Internationals uh, you wouldn't play it during it so the guys can play Big Bash, but you'd maybe play it after, at the start of February, um, as people are going back to school, and that can round off a good cricket season, which means the one day is, I'm actually opting for the one day is to be before the Test Series, and then you can play your one-day cup, similar to the way the Shield, I'm um, saying the Shield should run just a bit ahead of it. So I'd say start this cricket season with the one-day cup, September 1 or whenever the cricket season starts, Actually, that's still footy, so uh, yeah, well, no one watches the one-day cup anyway, so um, that can start in mid-September, roll that right through to the end of October, and then you can play your one-day internationals in late October to early November. Then you start your test cricket in mid-November, as the Shields already started in late October, and that way, at all times in every single format, the selectors have a relevant set of statistics to choose their players from. Like, I'm looking at these Shield stats right now for South Africa. This happened three months ago. So it's pretty outrageous picking a spinner from this Shield thing, but that's what we have to do right now. And it's just so illogical. It's so stupid. I know it's done for financial reasons that the Shield has to be on, uh, that the Big Bash has to be on during the Christmas New Year period, but I can't see why there would be too much of a financial dip if it was just played in January because... That's the bulk of the tournament is still played in January, so I can't see why the Shield can't run it to the end of December. And yeah, that's just what I believe should happen. Yes, in an ideal world, the BBL would be played in October. We would pay the ICC to block out a month for us like the IPL does. We have access to every single international cricketer as there's not much cricket going on in October, but I understand that is legitimately asking way too much of Cricket Australia. So I think we've just got to settle for January. Understand we're probably not going to get the big names, but then you get to see a few local talents, young guys, give it a crack. And yeah, I think we just go from there. But the main point of this is the Shield has to be running or at least close to the test cricket because it, it, I'm honestly sick of um because I'm at my wits end of hearing people being put into the test selection picture off BBL innings. Um so yeah, sorry for that kind of 
unstructured rant there at the end. I just felt like I needed to get that off my chest. And what better place to do it on my podcast? So that's it. It's a miracle. Oh, yeah. Cheers, here's Siddle.